Hello bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. This is the start of another reading vlog. Alright guys, so today is September 8th and the last time I did a vlog check-in was way back on August 5th, even though I didn't post that video for a long time, but as I mentioned sort of in that last video, I went through something really difficult in August and I just, I couldn't bring myself to end that video with a talking clip. So I just posted what I had at that point and I've taken more of a break from vlogging, but I am ready to get back into reading and into booktube. If anything, it'll be a good distraction from my personal life. So I'm here to tell you what I've been reading. Before I get into the reading stuff, let me tell you about a little bit of life stuff and other non-reading things that I've been doing because I've been doing a lot of non-reading things. <laughs> I'm not going to go into detail in the, this video quite yet about the personal life stuff that I had going on in August. I am actually planning to make a whole video about it because it is something that I think talking about will help me with the healing process, but I also want to put out there that when I post this video, which when I do post it, it'll be very obvious what I'm talking about. But when I post this video, I don't want anyone who watches my normal content to feel obligated to watch the video. I think it's a video that not everyone's going to be interested in and that's totally fine. But I want to make that video mainly for me, like I said, for my healing process, but also for other people who have gone or are going through what I went through. I know this is being really vague and I promise I'm not like trying to be super mysterious. I'm just, I'm not ready to talk about it yet, <clears throat> but I just wanted to put out there that I will talk about it eventually. And when I do, nobody needs to feel obligated to watch it because it will not be about books at all and it won't hurt my feelings if you decide to skip that video. Anyways, on to some more happy life things. Toby is doing great. If you don't know, Toby is the puppy that I bought earlier this summer and we got off to a rough start because he was really sick and his sister died because she was really sick, but he is thriving and doing so well. He is so playful and one of my two other dogs loves to play with him. They play fight all the time and it is adorable to see them running around the yard, running around the house. Toby has grown so much. He is now a good amount bigger than my other two dogs when he started out very much smaller than them. And we even got him his very first haircut last week so he looks really different than he did before. He's just the sweetest thing and even though the summer has been really really rough for me and my husband and my whole family, Toby has brought us so much joy and has been worth some of this heartache we've been going through. I also wanted to mention that a few weeks ago we did the booktube SFF award show, like the judges portion, where we also announced the popular votes. So I will link that down in the description box if you missed it. That was a lot of fun to do. I had so much fun participating and being a judge in that. I will say it was a little nerve-wracking because I felt like that I was often the odd one out when it came to my opinion and it wasn't always easy to be honest about what I thought but I think it made for some really interesting conversations and hopefully you guys enjoyed that and hopefully you also see that I am always really honest on my opinions on books even if they happen to be a bit of an unpopular opinion. So because of all of the difficult things I was going through in August, I didn't do a lot of reading. Instead, I spent a lot of time watching TV and playing video games. So as far as TV, I have definitely fallen into a bit of a reality TV show rabbit hole. I honestly don't usually watch a ton of reality TV, but I do have a few shows that are my weak spots. One of them is Big Brother. I have been watching Big Brother for at least seven years now, like every summer. It's just a summer tradition. And this year is Big Brother 22. It's an all-star season and I am thoroughly enjoying watching that with my husband. The other reality TV that I like to watch usually are the Teen Moms, but they aren't on right now. And so I went searching for some other reality TV to watch and I decided to start watching 90 Day Fiance, which has a lot of different spinoffs. So the 
two, I have been watching two different ones. The two that I've been watching are the current season of 90 Day Fiance The Other Way. And I've also been watching 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. The most recent season, the one with Rose and the infamous Ed. I'm not quite done with that season yet. I mean, the season is done being filmed. I'm not done watching it, but I am totally caught up on the 90 days the other way. They are currently like at, on a mid-season hiatus. I think partially because of the pandemic and stuff, but they're going on hiatus for six weeks. I didn't know that until I watched the last episode that aired and I was so bummed for like two days because I wasn't gonna get my fix of those storylines for like six more weeks. And then as far as video games, there was a couple of weeks that I got really into this new game that came out recently called Fall Guys. It is kind of all the rage right now in the video game world, at least the part of the video game world that I watch on Twitch. And I think I had some clips of me or maybe it was my husband playing it in my last reading vlog. So if you were wondering what that video game was with like these big jelly bean looking things with like wobbly arms going through obstacle courses, that was Fall Guys and it's a really fun game. Highly recommend. I also finally finished my playthrough of Horizon Zero Dawn. I had years ago like 20 15, 2017, 2017, had played through like 85% of Horizon Zero Dawn and then like quit cold turkey and never picked it up again because that's like a bad video game habit that I have. And so earlier this year, I started the game over because I was determined to finish it. And this time I got like 90% through it and stopped playing. I got distracted by, I think it was Animal Crossing, but I finally picked it back up. I finally finished it. I love the way that it ended and now I'm super excited about the sequel. There's a sequel game coming out I think next year and I cannot wait to play it. I also, after being encouraged by my friend Elliot Brooks, who I will link down below, I purchased the game Ghost of Tsushima. It's a historical fiction video game that's set in like old Japan. Admittedly, I haven't gotten very far in it, but the game is beautiful. The fighting is a little difficult, not gonna lie. I'm not good at video games, so I'm still kind of getting used to it, but I'm very much looking forward to playing more of that game, but I haven't been playing more of that game because over the last week or so, I've been doing a lot of reading. So that takes us into the reading portion of this update. Since the last time I checked in, which like I said was a month ago, I finished The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager, which I gave five stars, absolutely loved it, had so much fun, really, really liked the way that it ended. The ending surprised me as have all of Riley Sager's endings. And I just had a blast reading that book. I have already, by the time you see this, posted my August reading wrap up. So you probably already knew that. Another thing that I realized I didn't mention in my last reading vlog, I didn't for some reason mention The Year of the Witching, even though I think I had finished it right before I had filmed that clip. I don't know how I totally forgot to mention that. That was a horror book that I gave four stars. I didn't quite love it, but there was a lot of things about that book that I did enjoy. And I definitely would like to read more of Alexis Henderson in the future. I was really impressed that that was a debut novel because it didn't read like a debut novel to me. And then of course, the other thing that I have finished by now is How Long Till Black Future Month. And if you've been watching my last few reading vlogs, you know that I've been struggling <laughs> with that book. There were so many short stories that I just, flat out did not like, did not like the writing style. I didn't understand them. So many of them, I had no idea what happened and it was just like really a frustrating reading experience. But then towards like the middle of the short story collection, I started to find a few here and there that I did enjoy. By the end of it, there were quite a number that I liked and I'm glad that I read it, which is why I ended up giving it an overall four star rating. Okay, so two other books that I was reading in that last reading vlog, and I'm pretty sure in that last reading vlog, I said that I had made no progress in them, and I still have not made any progress in them. First one is This Vicious Cure. As of today, I decided I'm ready to pick this one back up, but I literally have not read anything in it. Let's see, I am, I think I have read 114 pages so far, like this much. I actually haven't decided if I want to start over or not because it just seems like it was so long ago <laughs> when I was reading this. I still have a vague idea of what was going on, but I don't want the big gap in me reading it to impact my overall enjoyment of the story. So I think I'm probably going to start over in this, but 
I don't know. I'm currently reading this technically. And the other one that I have made no progress in and may or may not start over is Abaddon's Gate by James S.A. Corey, the third book in the Expanse series. Both of these books I started reading in July, I think, <laughs> and I just like totally stopped reading them in August and didn't make any progress on them. Not because of anything wrong with those books, I just had stuff going on in my personal life and I wasn't reading. <laughs> so those two are definitely priorities for me over the next few weeks. I want to finish them up and move on with my life. But also you guys will be excited to hear, at least some of you will be excited to hear, I started Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson and this has been my main focus probably for the last week, week and a half when I've actually been reading again and I am halfway through it this far through it and I'm really enjoying it. No surprise there. I do have it in physical format, which is from my library, but I also own the ebook and the audiobook and I've been kind of doing all three formats as I like to do. If you've been watching my reading vlogs, you'll know that there is a read along happening for this series right now and I have been consistently behind the read along. So I have not been able to join in on any of the live streams that they've done. They do live streams for every like quarter of the book. They're doing the live stream for the 75% mark of Words of Radiance on Thursday. Today's Tuesday. I really wanted to get caught up by then and I did read a lot over the weekend like 150 pages maybe a little bit more which some people doesn't sound like a lot but to be able to join in on the live stream I was gonna have to basically keep up that pace all week. I just decided last night that it was kind of stressing me out <laughs> and also I felt like I was kind of rushing through the book and I really wanted to kind of savor my time with these characters and in this world and I didn't want to rush it. So I gave up trying to catch up by Thursday but I am gonna try and catch the very last live show where we will discuss the end ending of the book, which is obviously like the most exciting part anyways. I mean, I do think the 75% mark is a fun live stream to catch because that's right before the ending and it's a fun time to try and make predictions about what you think is going to happen. But I am also taking some fairly good notes on this book because I would really like to make a spoilery video. I'm not making any promises, but my plan is to do a book diary for this. And if you haven't seen any of my other book diaries before, I have a few for the Wheel of Time series. Basically, they're really in-depth spoilery videos where I update you guys mid-book as I go along and kind of let you know what I'm thinking as I'm going along. They tend to be kind of long and I don't do them very often because honestly they're very labor intensive. Anyways, I feel like I'm kind of rambling here, but Words of Radiance, I'm halfway through, really enjoying it. I have multiple people that I'm like updating with thoughts as I go along and I'm doing kind of like a buddy read with this person I met on a Wheel of Time Discord server and stuff. So I'm having a lot of fun reading this book because I'm talking about it with a lot of people and I just, I love the world and the characters and I'm learning so much about Shalon and her backstory that is super intriguing and I cannot wait to finish it and catch up with the read along so that I can participate in the live streams. All right guys, I have been talking for way too long, but I definitely had a lot to update you on. It's been like a month since I've done a vlog check-in. I will try to check in with you guys in about a week and let you guys know how successful I was at making progress on the things that I'm reading. Bye.
Hey guys, so it is currently uh, about 7 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, September 19th. So it's been about a week and a half since my last check-in and I'm here for another update. I'm hoping I can do this update pretty quickly because the first part of this video ended up being really long. I've already edited some of it. So let's hope I can keep this part short. I don't have a whole lot of like life stuff to update you guys on. I do want to mention that about a week ago, so like a day or two after I filmed my last check-in, I participated in a live stream over on Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany's channel. I will link the live stream below, but it was about booktube consumerism. There were five of us, five booktubers that talked about our various point of views on booktube consumerism. It's kind of been a hot topic the last couple of weeks, although this is a hot topic that comes up repeatedly over the years, like every few months or so. So if you're interested in hearing some other people's opinions on it, definitely go check that video out. I do also have a related video on my channel from way long ago, from like the very beginning of my channel called I Don't Buy Books. It is one of my most viewed videos and I feel a little bit bad about that only because I've been meaning to update that video for a long time because my buying habits have definitely changed since then because I've made that video probably almost five years ago. I'm coming up on my five year booktube anniversary, which is so exciting. I can't believe that I've been doing this for so long. I mean, not super consistently at times, but still. And it's pretty much the only hobby other than reading, which honestly, reading's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle, <laughs> but it's the only hobby that I've really like stuck with for that long. So that's exciting. That's a tangent. But yeah, in this live stream on booktube consumerism, I kind of talk about how my buying habits have changed over the years. The other thing that I've been doing really just for the last couple of days is I've been kind of digging into Notion. It started out with just doing a little bit of research and now I'm kind of working on a few setups in there. If you're not familiar with Notion, it is a productivity app and I've heard a lot about it, but honestly, it's always seemed really intimidating and that's why I've been hesitant to like look into it. I had to watch quite a few videos before I felt comfortable taking a stab at doing my own setups, but I am super excited about it and I've kind of been nerding out about it for the last few days. And honestly, I haven't been getting much reading done over the last couple of days because of it. If any of you guys use Notion, definitely let me know down in the comment section, especially if you use it to like track your reading and you have any tips or tricks to share with me. As I'm coming out of a couple of reading slumps this summer, I have really been struggling to figure out what I want to read. I've definitely been in the mood to read, but just can't seem to decide on what to read. And in my last clip, I talked about picking up the two books that I had started before my last reading slump, which were Abaddon's Gate and The Suspicious Cure. I was like 20% into The Suspicious Cure and I think only like 10% into Abaddon's Gate. And my plan at the end of the last clip was to just pick back up and start reading them again or possibly start over in them. And I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And I don't know what it is. It's, it's definitely not anything to do with these books. I think they just remind me of a happier time in some ways and I just, I can't read them right now. I do want to read them but I'm putting them on my paused shelf on Goodreads and I'm gonna come back to them another time. I decided I needed a bit of a fresh start so I picked some different things to read and now I'm in the middle of two books that I didn't talk about in my last clip. I am still reading Words of Radiance, sort of. I read just a little bit of it over the last week or so. Let me see. You probably can't tell. I'm this far through it. I've probably read about 10% since my last check-in. And I'm still really enjoying this, but I did kind of put this on pause as well because I want to film a spoilery video and I have not <laughs> filmed those spoilery clips yet. And I just, I know things are gonna start happening, like bigger reveals and things. And I wanna film those video clips before I get much further. It's on my to-do list for this weekend and I definitely will be picking this back up at a faster pace next week. But the two books that I have started reading since my last clip, one's right behind me. I decided maybe a middle grade would be a good like palette cleanser and a mood lifter in some ways. This is Fablehaven by Brendan Mull. It's the first book in the Fablehaven series and it's a middle grade contemporary fantasy about two siblings, Kendra and Seth. They go and stay with their grandparents because their parents have to go 
on a cruise after the death of their other grandparents. What they don't know is that their grandparents are caretakers of a refuge called Fable Haven of fantastical, magical animals like fairies and witches and golems and satires and all kinds of other magical creatures. This has been on my like one day TBR for a really long time and I think I've put it on a couple of my like seasonal TBRs as well and I just never get to it. I always talk about how much I want to read more middle grade because I have in the past really enjoyed middle grade when I was obviously when I was younger but also as like a younger adult <laughs> than I am now and I just never get around to it so because I was feeling so slumpy I decided it was time to pick this one up and I'm so glad that I did I'm really enjoying this I am almost done with it I'm about this far into it I think I'll finish it in the next couple days I think I'm 77% in and things have gotten really interesting there's a lot that I like about this and it's definitely the light and fluffy read that I needed right now in my life I am also reading this with my friend Graf We've been talking about reading this together forever and this has just been a lot of fun and it's made me laugh so many times. And then the other thing that I am currently reading is one of my TBR jar picks. I have a TBR jar, it's that thing behind me. Most of the books in that jar are ones from my own TBR but there are other books in there as well and every season I pull out three to add to like a running list. And the thing is, is that I haven't been getting to my TBR jar picks. I just keep telling myself I'm not in the mood for those right now and I read other things. And my TBR jar list just keeps getting longer and longer. So I decided it was time to finally focus a little bit more on my TBR jar picks and try to make progress on them. So I picked up one of my TBR jar picks and that is Beautiful by Juliet Marillier. I am listening to this one on audiobook. It is one that I own and it's actually an Audible original which means that the audiobook from Audible is the only format that it's available in at least currently. I think eventually there might be plans to do more like ebook and print versions but as of right now you can only get an audiobook only from Audible. I've always wanted to try some Juliet Marillier. I planned on starting with the Seven Water series but I ended up buying this book last year and because I'm reading Fable Haven physically and on ebook I needed an audiobook. This is sort of a retelling of the fairy tale East of the Sun, West of the Moon. That was not a fairy tale I was familiar with and I didn't think that that was like going to be an issue going into the story but the story is told in three parts and the first third kind of closely follows that fairy tale but from a different point of view and honestly I just was a little confused about what was going on I felt like I was missing something and so what I ended up doing was going and watching a little YouTube video that told East of the Sun West of the Moon. Earlier today I finished part one of the book and I would say I'm about 35% through it based on what my eyeballs can tell from the audiobook progression bar and I'm enjoying it. Obviously being a little confused at first wasn't ideal but I really am loving the atmosphere and the feeling of the story like it definitely feels like a fairy tale which is like really cozy and even though it doesn't totally feel like fall here yet in Texas it's still pretty hot. It's giving me all the fall feels because I don't know for some reason I associate fairy tales with like fall and winter. But yeah I'm about a third of the way through the story and I'm very intrigued. Like I said the first part of the three-part story follows the fairy tale pretty closely and then from there it goes on and it does other things. So I'm really interested to see where the story is going to go from here. The ending of part one was pretty intriguing. Oh I also wanted to say about the the fairy tale east of the sun west of the moon. I think it's a Nordic fairy tale. If you guys know let me know in the comment section but it's definitely not one that I'm familiar with but there were definitely elements of it that reminded me a little bit of Beauty and the Beast. So if anybody knows if those are related at all, I would be super curious to know that. Anyways, that is my reading update for the last week and a half. Made very little progress on Words of Radiance and I started two new books. I hope you guys are having a really good reading week. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bookworms, keep reading. Bye.